Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. My name is Richard Rost. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about BiREF and BiVal in Access VBA programming. And specifically, we're going to address the question, does Access VBA have an increment operator like some other programming languages do? Today's question comes from Alex. Alex is actually one of my admins. He's my, my right-hand man. I bounce a lot of stuff off of him, and he helps me out a lot. And we got to talking about yesterday's uh, extended cut video. He says, after watching yesterday's extended cut video, you mentioned that Access VBA doesn't have an increment operator like C does, which is plus plus. Does it support plus equal? He says he spent so much time working in C sharp, he just assumed this stuff existed in VB. If you look at the little picture I, I put up here, you can see customer count equals customer count plus one is how you have to do things in Visual Basic because it doesn't support an increment operator. This little guy here is called an increment operator. In a language like C, if you want to add one to customer count, you can just say customer count plus plus. Or in some other languages, you can say customer count plus equals one. Well, Visual Basic doesn't support any of that. So what I'm going to show you today is how to make your own little subroutine that we're going to call ink which you just say ink customer count, and it's basically the same. It's as easy as doing that. Once you, once you get used to it, uh, there you go, right? All right, so let's see how this works. Okay, here I've got a real simple database with just a form in it. The form's got a button on it. I'm going to put some stuff in this button. So right-click, build event. If you get asked what kind of builder you want, pick the code builder. If you've never done Visual Basic programming before, this isn't the lesson for you. I've got other lessons on VB Basics. Uh, I'll put links below the video here but this is for people who know a little bit of VB. Okay, so if I have a variable, let's call it X. All right, let's actually dim that as a long. Okay, if I wanna say X equals nine, and I wanna increment X, I have to say X equals X plus one. And that doesn't seem like a lot of typing, just to look at that, of course, it's, it's X. But if you've got a variable that's, you know, customer, interest, value, or whatever, all right, you've got to either copy and paste or you've got to type that in twice. So if you're dealing with big, long variable names, yeah, it, it can be a lot of typing. So it'd be nice to be able to say plus plus there to add one to it, which you can do in C or even plus equals one, okay? Which a lot of other languages support, but not Visual Basic. So now if I say message box X, I should get a 10, all right? Let me switch this over to form view and hit the button. Boom, there's a 10, perfect, okay. Now, I can make an increment function, which is basically, which would look like this, right? We could say, let's just make this private for now. Private function, we'll call it increment, inc. All right, we'll take in x as long, and we'll return a long. Okay, so here I'll say x equals x plus one. Or you could even say, in this case, to make your code short, inc equals x plus one. That's how access returns values, right? X will come into here as a long, add one to it and return that as ink. And now down here, I can say X equals ink X. Now that's almost as much typing as we had before, but it works, all right? I'd like to shorten this even more. I wanna make this so easy, literally all I have to do is type in here ink X like that, all right? And we can if we know how by ref and by val work. All right, so let's get rid of this. We're gonna switch this over, private, sub, now not a function. We're not gonna return a value, okay? Private sub, inc, capitalize the inc, and we're gonna say by ref x as long, and we don't have to return a value, all right? And here, say x equals x plus one. Okay, I'll explain what this does in a minute. Let me show you that it works, look at that. All right, we can increment it again. Ink X a second time. Boom, and now it's 11, okay? How does this work? And what's the difference between by ref and by val? The other option is by val. If I switch this to by val, all right, watch what happens. It's still nine, okay? So you need by ref in here. What does this mean? Okay, by ref is technically the default. If you don't put anything in here, you get by ref. All right, if I don't put anything in there, watch what happens. It actually increments it, but don't rely on that because it's not always the case in certain circumstances and with certain languages. So I like to, if this is, an, if this is a, a problem, I like to specify by ref up here, if you're going to rely on it for your code. 
Okay, what is the difference? By ref sends a pointer, a reference to the original variable. All right, when I dim this X as a long, all right, Windows reserves a little tiny bit of memory in the computer's RAM, okay, that it, it makes a pointer to. It says this address, this location, kind of like your location on your block, right, your house address, all right, this is where I'm storing the value X, and that's a pointer to it. So when I pass that up to a function, this function actually receives a pointer to X. That's the reference. So if I make any changes to it, it changes it down here. Sometimes people email me and they can't understand why their code is misbehaving. That's because they're ac accidentally changing it up here and they don't mean to, because the default is by ref. If you switch this to by val, it doesn't send that pointer, it sends the actual value. And then you can do stuff up here and ma make changes and you don't have to worry about it affecting the rest of your code. Okay, but if we do by ref, now we're actually sending a reference to X. So X goes up here. If it gets changed, it gets returned down here. And this can be a different va variable, by the way. This could be uh, PPP. All right, when it comes in here, it's PPP. Watch this. We'll just go PPP and then PPP. The name of it inside this function is meaningless and then it'll still work. Okay, it's basically saying send this address up here. Now call it PPP. All right, do some stuff to it. And then when you return it, it's getting stored back in X. All right, let me undo that. So now that you know this, you can make yourself your own little tiny little function here called inc and it'll increment X, right? Because we're going to send up a memory address containing X, make some changes to it, and then return it down here. Do stuff. See, now we got 10. And that is by ref versus by val. And that is how you can make your own increment operator. You can do the same thing with a decrement op operator if you want to, right? Same exact thing, call this one DEC for, de for decrement or decrement or whatever you want to pronounce it. X equals X minus one. All right, increment X and then well, let's just decrement it. DEC X. Actually, DEC might be a reserved word. Let me see here. Okay, now <laughs> DEC could, could be decimal in some languages. So you want to be careful with this stuff. Okay, that's all folks for today's free tech help. There's an extended cut members edition. And in that video, I show you how to work with optional parameters so you can have it where you can specify how many to increment it by, three, five, 10, whatever. So you don't have to just increment by one, but the default will be one. And we can specify that with an optional parameter. I'll show you how to use form controls in addition to just X, because right now X is just a dimmed variable, but you can do the same thing with controls on a form. So here, let me pull it up for you. All right, I can hit the button here and look at that, it can increment the little field on the form. And in our code, we'll determine if that is a field or if I'm just sending it a number. And there's a way you can tell. And then we'll create a global module where we can make this a public subroutine, same as subroutines and functions work pretty much the same this way, so that everybody can use it. We'll change it from private to public. The way you can call your ink uh, subroutine from anywhere in your database. How do you become a member? Well, click on that join button down below the video. You'll get access to all my extended cut tech help videos, live video sessions, chats, other kinds of perks as well. Hit the join button. It'll tell you what all the different membership levels are and what the costs are. But don't worry, these tech help videos are going to be free for the foreseeable future. I'm gonna keep making them for free as long as you guys keep watching them. So if you like it, make sure you subscribe and comment and share and do all that good stuff. This uh, subscribing is free, of course. It will give you uh, updated notifications whenever I release a new video. Make sure you click the little bell there, ring the bell. Also, you can stop by my website and check out my access forum. If you wanna learn more, make sure you click on that little show more link down below the video description, all right? YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding that. It's not very visible. And when you click on it, you'll see links to all kinds of extra stuff. Like today we talked about um, uh, by ref and by val and dimming variables. And I've got more lessons available on my website and here on YouTube that talk about these things in more detail. And of course, there's always the access index on my website that'll pretty much show you where everything is. If you have not yet watched my free access level one class, it's three hours long. It's absolutely free. There's the address. And if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. Now, you might be thinking that, well, I'm a VBA guy. I've, I've been doing some programming. Obviously, you watch this lesson. But I have a lot of people that have told me they've been using Access for many, many years. And they watch my beginning level one class, and they still picked up a few things. It's free. Just give it a look. Okay? Level two is a dollar if you do decide to continue on. And um, if you become a member of my Learning Connection, you will get a 50% discount if you want to get any of the more advanced lessons. 
uh, level two is also free for members of my YouTube channel. So just let me know. Want to get your question answered? Well, there's the page. Drop it there. I've also got a full directory of all my tech help videos on there. You can send me an email. I prefer the tech help page because I do get a lot of email and I check my tech help page more often. But there's that. There's my blog, Facebook, Twitter, and of course, my YouTube page. And special thanks again to Alex, my right-hand man, who uh, asked me this question. We were uh, just chatting this morning, and he asked me. He, he was watching last night's Tech Help video. He's like, doesn't Access have a, an increment operator? I'm like, mm, no, not that I'm aware of, so let's make one. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. We'll see you next time. Keep learning.